<laughs> what are you <laughs> going on the defensive? Figured an open an open Bible is better than a closed Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Just get yourself ready there, bud. I am. Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, friends, uh, welcome to the Ransomed Heart Podcast. Um, what Art does in the studio here behind his little booth is he just turns the mics on when we sit down and and uh, captures some of our pre-recording banter, which actually ends up being better podcast material than what we officially do. I'm John Eldridge. If you're new to the Ransomed Heart podcast, welcome. Craig McConnell with me today. And um, I have been wanting to do something for a while now. Um, I love to read, and I love to read... Uh, the saints, uh, both current but also primarily back through time. And um, I'll find myself reading something when I'm at home, uh, nowhere near the studio, nowhere near this context, and go, oh, oh, this would be – I would love to share this with our friends who listen in and and talk about it, but then, you know – Probably like your moments of inspiration and connection with God, you know, seven minutes later it's gone and, and I'm out the door. So what I did, I grabbed two books that I've been reading um, and brought them in. And I thought, Craig, it would be just cool to um, share with our listeners what we're reading and how we're reacting to it and talk about it. Okay? Okay. Now, I happen to know that you are primed for this first one Ooh. because of what God's been doing in your life. Yes. Okay. So let me tee this up for you. And by the way, mm-hmm. I haven't been uh, clued in yet to what he's going to read. <laughs> <laughs> this is my way of doing things. Mm-hmm. Um, this essay is from a collection of essays by C.S. Lewis called God in the Dock. Um, the dock is a English term for uh, like the witness box, the defense box. God on trial would be another way of of describing that. And it's just a, it's a series of essays that range over a wide variety of subjects. But one that I keep coming back to because it is so powerful is a little three page essay called Two Ways with the Self." Two Ways with the Self," and. Um, He begins like this. He says, self-renunciation is thought to be, and indeed is, very near the core of Christian ethics. Um, Lewis goes on to talk about uh, an essay by St. Francis de Sales where he says, we are forbidden to indulge resentment even against ourselves and advised to reprove even our own faults with mild and calm remonstrances, feeling more compassion than passion. In the same spirit, Lady Julian of Norwich would have us loving and peaceable, not only to our fellow Christians, but to ourselves. And then Lewis goes on to say, even the New Testament bids me love my neighbor as myself, which would be a horrible command if the self were simply to be hated. And what strikes me about this is the idea that when you when you encounter things in yourself that you don't like, what's your normal reaction to that? How do you normally handle, you know, the surprising appearance or the not so surprising and all too common appearance, mm-hmm. you know, of things within you that you don't like? Uh, self-renunciation, self-loathing, um, I'm a schmuck, uh, dang, that hasn't changed, I'm not living well, where is God in, in ways I really need him, um, there's no hope, I'm always going to be this way, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, isn't that, I think that's very common. Yeah, actually. And it, I do too. I mean, the experience that we're describing, friends, is this, that you're trying to live well, you're trying to love well, you're trying to walk with God, you're trying to be a, a better man or woman. And these things show up, right? Either things that are so familiar to you, you, you know, 
you know them far too well. You know, the the repeated things that keep tripping you up or, or those parts mm-hmm. of your personality, you mm-hmm. know, that you would rather keep hidden. Or or the experience that I'm describing is sometimes when new things show up, yes. things that you haven't known about yourself, and suddenly you go, oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. Whoa, that's true of me. I never saw myself as, you know, a frightened person. I never saw myself as a worrier, but oh my goodness, I do. Or I never saw myself as as envious or petty or jealousy, yeah. but oh my goodness, there it is. And suddenly you can see there's a whole history of it. Yes. Okay. Either experience, whether it's something you're familiar with or something that's new, what I wanted to bring to our friends today is how do you handle that? How do you handle suddenly being faced with something you don't like about yourself, Mm -hmm. right? Whether it's something you're very well aware of or something that's new and it's kind of an epiphany to you, either case, what do we typically do? Mm -hmm. Um, John, my – you know, there's two very different experiences I have. One which I just mentioned, um, I think like many of us, I just – turn on myself in some way. But I've also had the experience even recently where some pretty profound things about myself have surfaced that are new, but they surfaced in such a a context of grace and invitation of God for healing that I oddly didn't have what is the common experience of self-renunciation and condemnation. So all I'm saying is that I've had two experiences. One is the the um, just beat yourself up. And the other is, wow, I am broken. I am mm. wounded. Mm. I have sinned yeah. horribly. But it's, there's a context of grace there as well. So both of those have been my experience. Yes, one more than the other. Yes. <laughs> I would point out as your friend of, yeah. of yeah. Uh, 30 as, years. Yes, one more than the other. Yeah, and talk about the fruit of each. What is the fruit of self-loathing, self-contempt, self-hatred? I'm such a schmuck. I hate well, that about me. Well, the immediate thing it provides is you feel like you've dealt with it. You've dealt with the issue by assigning fault that I'm my heart's bad. Mm. I'm not a good per- there's actually some sense of relief or resolve by assigning blame either mm. to yourself or to God or to someone. Yeah. But the long-term fruit is it it remains untouched by God because in a funny way the self-loathing is kind of a holding on to it. That's huge. I know this to be true, but I want our listeners to mm-hmm. get this because the title of the essay Lewis is talking about, there are two ways with the self mm-hmm. and, and this I, you know, that self-renunciation is core to Christian ethics. But what does Jesus mean by that? Mm-hmm. You know, love your neighbor as yourself is a horrible command if you hate yourself, right? Because yeah. then, you're, then you're free to hate your neighbor. Yeah. And let me add something here, friends, that um, the way you handle yourself will be the way you end up handling others. You may try, as I have, to separate the two and be brutal with yourself, be hard on yourself, self-contempt, loathing, shame, guilt, you know, and but be compassionate and loving and kind toward others. It works for a while, mm-hmm. but not not over time. I mean, the way you handle your own shortcomings failures, sins, brokenness, you know, the whole category of things you don't like about yourself, the way you handle that will eventually be the way you handle others. And I experienced this last week where I needed some prayer and I actually texted a few friends and, you know, kind of the instant prayer request and and just said, hey, could you pray for me? And and one of them texted back and, and it was... It was frankly pretty abrupt. It it was basically buck up, you're pouting, you know, suck it up kind of a thing. And I realized, oh, that's 
that's actually the way this person handles themselves. It was such a clear picture of, oh, yeah, they do that to themselves all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, and then here I am being the recipient of it now. And it was not helpful. Mm-hmm. It was not helpful. So what the essay stirred and what we're talking about is the idea that Francis de Salle says, we are forbidden to indulge resentment even against ourselves. Mm. So self-resentment is not the same thing as taking up your cross, Mm -hmm. dying to yourself. It's not. It's a very different thing. Self-hatred is not the same thing as repentance. These are very, very different things, friends, and they bear very, very different fruit. Uh, We're forbidden to indulge resentment even against ourselves and advised to reprove our own faults with mild and calm Remonstrances, an older word that means, you know, corrections, Mm -hmm. you know, mild and calm corrections toward ourself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is the Christian approach to dealing with faults, shortcomings, Mm -hmm. blow its character flaws. And then and then Lewis goes on to quote Julian of Norwich, who would have us be loving and peaceable, not only to our fellow Christians, but to Mm ourselves, loving and peaceable toward these very things that cause us, my experience sometimes is not just embarrassment, but rage, Mm -hmm. anger, Mm -hmm. Mm self-hatred, contempt. And Craig, what you were saying before I interrupted you is that, you know, when you go to self-loathing, rage, contempt, guilt, you start just really crumbing on yourself. I'm such an, you know, I can't say what I... But um, I'm such an idiot. You know, I always do that that kind of thing. That's actually not repentance. Right. But it gives you the feeling Mm -hmm. of having repented. Mm -hmm. Right. Man, I really – boy, I'm I'm doing better. I really beat myself up over that. Mm -hmm. And now here's the epiphany, friends. That's not Christian and that's not repentance and that's not helpful. No, no. Long-term – all you're doing is set up a cycle. If that's how you're going to deal with with your life, is uh, or your problems or issues, is blame yourself or God, and and eventually, for after years or decades, you end up having to deny the realities of your weaknesses, brokenness, and sin. You you can't keep blaming someone else. You have to eventually slip into some form of denial mm-hmm. or. Yeah. That uh, no, I really don't do that. I'm really not that way. Right. I mean, right. You can't live constantly with self renunciation. Mm-hmm. Eventually, you either mm-hmm. turn to God or some deep form of denial. Mm-hmm. I right. think, or some sort of um, what would even be the description? Soul suicide, mm-hmm. where you just try and kill. Mm-hmm. these places in you as your means of dealing with it, mm-hmm. which is very different than peaceable and loving and mild and calm. And actually this very same theme, what brought this up was I was reading the exact same thing in Thomas Akempis the other day in The Imitation of Christ where he was talking about being compassionate toward our own shortcomings, yeah. you know, compassionate. And what arrested my attention is I'm not – I'm not. I'm brutal. Mm-hmm. You know, I execute a swift judgment, mm-hmm. right? And then some kind of what I think can feel like taking up my cross. But what I'm really just doing is just trying to kill it as opposed to, oh, Jesus, come. Mm-hmm. Bring your healing mercy. Bring your healing grace here. Mm-hmm. Being gracious with myself. Because of two reasons. One, I know that the other path doesn't work. Right. Beat right. yourself up. That doesn't work. That doesn't change character. That doesn't heal brokenness. That really doesn't deal right. with sin. It just doesn't. And I also, I don't want to be that way toward others. Yeah. And I just know that bottom line, at the end of the day, the way I treat myself in these matters will be the way that I treat others, if only internally. Right. You know, you'll kind of hold it against them. Oh, man, are you back here again? Are you struggling again? And we got to talk about this again, you know, uh-huh. toward other people. You know, you may put a good face on it and, oh, I'm so sorry and I'll pray for you. But internally, the loathing, 
hatred, resentment, self-contempt gets directed at them as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It'd be interesting, John, if if we just monitored kind of the chatter of our our internal world towards other people, and most of us don't do that. Oh my but if, if we monitored the internal chatter we have in terms of our valuation of people, reaction, judgments, criticisms, impatience, and said, that's probably how I treat myself. Mm. It'd be, I mean, that's one of those little indicators mm. of that's probably how you treat your own heart, yeah. your own being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And so earlier you were describing a very new experience, a very different experience of mm-hmm. God showing you some things in the last couple of weeks that were pretty important issues for you to mm-hmm. look at. But it was in the context of grace and mercy and kindness, and you didn't go to self-loathing. Where did you go? Wow, that's a good question. It felt, um, gosh, I felt fully exposed before God in a way that it just felt like it's time to be honest and true and somewhere woven into that that stark nakedness of just admitting and owning some things was the hope that uh, in this coming out, it's now time to deal with it and be healed. It, I don't know if I can put words to it fully yet, but mm. what was being exposed was was some profound failures on my part and deep brokenness and woundedness, but mm. I guess my reaction was sadness. Sadness that's what's true of my heart isn't true of my life. Mm-hmm. And that that how I thought I was living, how I thought I was relating, who I thought I was and am isn't how I've been living. And mm-hmm. just the, the disconnect there, a sadness and a turning to God, I want to be different. Mm-hmm. Without the hatred. Yeah, Without the beating yourself up. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to offer this to our friends who tune into the podcast because I think it's going to be really, really helpful, gang. Mm -hmm. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And the scriptures say, you know, as Paul says in Romans 2, it's the kindness of God that draws us to repentance. We want a genuine character change. We want to be you know, better men and women. But uh, there are two ways with the self. One is as gracious and loving and kind with our faults as God is, Mm -hmm. right? The other is uh, it can look like, you know, a Christian self-renunciation, but in fact it's just self-loathing, self-hatred, contempt, rage at this. And they are not the same thing. They lead down completely different paths. And the way you handle your own life is the way you will handle others eventually. You just can't avoid it. And and so uh, that's what I've been reading, one of the things I've been reading, and we thought it would be helpful to you all today. Thanks for joining the Ransomed Heart Podcast. For more, come to our website at ransomedheart.com.